Hi and a very good evening to our daily current affairs videos. How are you all? How is your preparation going on? Write it down in the comments below and let me know. Do connect with our mentors. If you have any doubt in any of the subject that you are preparing, reach out to us. We can help you. Uh, you know, we can guide you through a personalized mentorship program. All right. You can check out if you want to ensure sure shot selection. You can also check out our crash course for RBI grade B, which is just around the corner. It is still not late, right? Do check it out. Take the correct guidance and ensure a sure shot selection. All right. And today's PDF for our daily current affairs videos will be found in our Telegram app, right? The link for which is given in the description below. All right. So if you want the PDF, if you want the PDF of our uh, of this daily current affairs videos, please check out the link given in the description box. All right. So let's just start with the very first question of today. It is that how many countries are involved in mission innovation? All right. Mission innovation is a very, very important mission, which was launched in Paris Agreement on November 30th, 2015. We will discuss at length about it. But first answer the question correctly. You have options 23 countries, 46, 37, 58 or 27. All right. So the correct answer here is 23 countries plus the European Union. All right. So basically why was this question why did you get this mcq all right currently it news i think that recently india has launched mission integrated bio refineries right mission integrated bio refineries is one of the uh, mission one of the objectives of the broader mission that is mission innovation all right so this is a part of it all right so it's a co-partner main partner it is netherland right core members are brazil and canada but and the supporting members are european commission and the united kingdom all right so please remember these countries it can be asked in the mcq all right so it is a multi-stakeholder public private partnership wherein all the states who are interested in producing bio refineries right they want to increase the share of biofuels to the total share of petroleum right it increases all right so this is public private partnership right it is a multi-stakeholder public private partnership okay so the countries international organization corporate sector academic all right all these will the mission actually the multi-stakeholder partnership represents all the countries who have already uh, invested a lot in biofuels all right and the main aim of the mission is to replace 10 percent of the fossil fuels based fuels chemicals and materials with bio-based alternatives by 2030 all right so basically our key areas where will these bio bio-based alternatives will be implemented these are transportation industry and electricity generation all right so according to a recent study by 2050 right 2050 33% of the greenhouse gas emission jo hamare greenhouse gas emissions hai 33% of them right will be what will be from the transportation sector alone all right they will be from the transportation sector alone all right, so it is very, very important that when we talk biofuels, when we talk about climate change, ki baat karta, it is also very important to ensure commercialization of these fuels, right? So what do you mean by, what does basically, uh, do you imply by commercialization? Commercialization means costing, right? It should be at parity with the market price of the existing fuel, right? You use petroleum, you use diesel. You need an environmental friendly substitute, all right? So through commercialization, there will be purchasing parity, right? There will be parity in prices. The prices will be competitive or to promote them, they can be subsidized, right? Another very, very important aspect of commercialization uh, other than first was your pricing, right? other second important aspect of commercialization would be what it would be reducing adaptation risk right so for example ethanol production ki jab india mein baat ho thi, so there was an ongoing risk that ethanol blended petroleum product will is more likely to damage the engines all right but the 
researchers and the petroleum uh, refinery said that okay this is not so right as a kuch nahi hai it was confirmed and then ethanol blending was implemented all right so there is adequate research right before actual implementation in the market there is proper research so that the consumer the end consumer does not have to face any loss when transitioning from conventional to renewable sources of fuels all right so mission innovation let's discuss about uh, mission innovation right mission innovation is an intergovernmental consortium an intergovernmental organization that represents countries that represents a group of 24 countries or 23 countries just con confirm it from the site i think it is 24 countries plus the european union all right that have already invested a lot in clean energy right that till 2015 the mission uh, actually mobilized 5.8 billion dollars all right they have already invested a lot like 90% of the global public investment in clean energy this is what uh, what the countries uh, that are a member of this mission represent all right india obviously india is a member of mission innovation and some key initiatives by the indian government under the mission would be your national solar mission right an example right it is a broader mission and what uh, how many initiatives have been taken by the government of india that complement the aim of this mission that is the context over here right so for example ujwala yojana you all know about so national solar mission you all know about the clean cooking fuel ujwala yojana right and then you also have ethanol blending program by the government right all these are some important key initiatives taken by the government of india all right now uh, we are talking about uh, ministry of science and technology right who is the minister or union minister of science and technology is our very own honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji all right and the minister of state for science and technology is dr jitendra singh right dr jitendra singh in this is the minister of state for science and technology constituency is udhampur all right very very important and a qualified person you should read more about him whenever you have time that is why i told you and he is also the minister of state for earth and sciences as well as the prime minister's office all right so ministry of science and technology has also launched mini material acceleration platform all right so material acceleration platform is basically a knowledge network right it is a knowledge network and its main aim is to reduce the cost of clean energy that is being made available in the market all right using technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning robotics it aims to reduce the cost of clean energy in the market uh, through a knowledge network of renowned professionals and researchers all right so next question how much is the maximum limit of margin money to be contributed by the borrowers under stand up india scheme right stand up india scheme is implemented by the department of financial services under the ministry of finance all right you all know the union minister of finance write it down in the comments now the question is asking you the maximum limit of margin money right margin money ka matlab kya hota hai margin money means the amount of loan minus the amount invested by an entrepreneur all right so the amount of loan that i am getting and the amount of investment that i have made the difference between them accounts for your margin money and stand up india scheme jo ki bahut important scheme 2016 mein launch hui thi to promote entrepreneurship specially among sc st and women all right so answer the question correctly the correct answer here is 15% all right 10% is actually the minimum amount of money any promoter chahe sc ho ya st category ka ho ya fir koi mahila ho right that person has to at least contribute 10% of the project amount all right maximum contribution is 15% uske baad to government hi usko fund karega 
right now let's have a look at what margin money is but first let's understand about the scheme right it has been 6 years since the since the scheme uh, of stand up india was implemented all right and total loans worth 30160 crores have been sanctioned to approximately 1.33 lakh entrepreneurs all right सो बेसिकली ये स्कीम इम्प्लीमेंट किसके थ्रू होती है ऑल द शेड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक ऑफ द कंट्रीज ऑल द ऑफ द कंट्री ऑल द शेड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक ऑपरेट द स्टैंड अप इंडिया स्कीम और राइट सो प्रो बैंक लोन बिटवीन टेन लैख टू वन करोर आर प्रोवाइडेड टू द पीपल वेदर दे आर एस सी बॉरवर्स और एस टी बॉरवर्स और एटलीस्ट वन वुमेन बॉरवर पर बैंक ब्रांच राइट एंड ओनली ग्रीन फील्ड प्रोजेक्ट्स राइट दो प्रोजेक्ट्स दैट आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द स्क्रैच राइट नॉट ब्राउन फील्ड प्रोजेक्ट्स जिनमें ऑलरेडी थोड़ा बहुत इन्वेस्टमेंट और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलप हो गया नॉट दो बट सपोज आई हैव आई एम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम जीरो दैट इज आर ग्रीन फील्ड प्रोजेक्ट all right and only green field projects are eligible for loans under the scheme all right 18 years ke above ki age honi chahiye obviously and if non individuals are you know taking up an entrepreneurship for example collection of individuals right then at least 51% stake uh, for example you and your friends start to uh, you know uh, start a startup scheme right so at least 51% of your spend, uh, friends should be from this category right borrowers if you are borrowing you should not already be a defaulter to a bank right and as we discussed only green field projects all right so composite loan composite loan between rupees 10 lakh to rupees 1 crore right composite loan between these amounts is extended right is extended towards who is extended towards the borrower right composite loan basically include what they include both term loan as well as loan to fund the working capital right very very logical right why logical because green field projects are uh, you know funded through the scheme right so the composite loan would include term loan and the working capital both they would need loan for the working capital even if they are investing 10% of the amount they would need some loan for the working capital so this is the composite loan and the loan is payable within a period of 7 years jisme unko 18 months ka grace milta hai all right and the interest rate is reduced to a minimum level of 3% per annum okay so this is a very very good scheme right it has helped to 1.33 lakh approximately 1.33 lakh uh, entrepreneurs all right so this is mandatory limit is 10% maximum limit is 15% now this is what the margin uh, money is all about right the scheme envisages 15% margin money which can be provided in convergence with central or state government schemes all right so at least 15% agar kisi state ya central government ki scheme ke andar kisi bhi eligible person ko already koi benefit mil raha hai राइट right? तो उसके ऊपर से भी 15 परसेंट मार्जिन मनी विल बी गिवन बाय दिस स्टैंड अप इंडिया स्कीम और राइट दिस इज व्हाट मार्जिन मनी इज ऑल अबाउट और राइट सो दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एंटायर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ हाउ स्टैंड अप इंडिया स्कीम बेसिकली वर्क्स लीड डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैनेजर इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर यू नो checking out the banks right sidbi and nabard is also linked with certain institutions all right and then the lead district manager distributes the loan right basic basic uh, uska loan distribution ka kaam kaun karta hai the implementation is always with scheduled commercial banks all right moving on to the next question we have delhi municipal corporation act of 1957 give the rights to the center for merging of municipal corporation in the national capital all right so national capital territory ke mein municipal corporations kaun kaun se east delhi south delhi and north delhi these three municipal corporations are being merged under which article of this dmc act of 1957 answer the question correctly right so the correct answer here is section 3a section 3a of this act provides for the merger of these uh, municipal corporations so municipal corporations aap log kya samajhte ho 
कोई भी मेट्रोपॉलिटन सिटी जिसका पॉपुलेशन इज मोर देन वन मिलियन और राइट दे आर ऑलवेज मैनेज देयर ट्रांसपोर्ट देयर हेल्थ केयर देयर एजुकेशन दीज थ्री एटलीस्ट दीज थ्री बेसिक सर्विसेज आर मैनेज बाय द म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन ऑल्सो नोन बाय वेरियस नेम्स लाइक नगर निगम महानगर पालिका राइट सो दिस इज द डेली म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन अमेंडमेंट बिल जो कि होम मिनिस्टर मिस्टर अमित शाह ने इंट्रोड्यूस किया है टू अमेंड दिल्ली म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन एक्ट यू ऑल नो दैट दिल्ली म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन दिल्ली नेशनल कैपिटल रीजन कम्स एंड इट इज़ अ यूनियन टेरिटरी राइट इट इज़ अ यूनियन टेरिटरी विद अ लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली बट इट कम्स अंडर द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ये सारे एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव फीचर्स उसके सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के अंडर आ जाते हैं राइट The lieutenant governor is appointed by uh, the central government under Article two thirty nine and two thirty nine A A of the Indian Constitution. Right, that provides for the special status of Delhi. Right, Delhi ke special status ke liye diye dono articles central government pro uh, the Indian Constitution provides. All right. and as per this the central government appoints lieutenant general of uh, delhi uh, the present uh, lg of delhi is mr ajay tyagi right mr ajay tyagi since the year 2016 all right so this is what it is all about why sorry sorry not mr ajay tyagi mr anil bejal all right mr anil Bajal is the LG of Delhi, right? Since two thousand and sixteen. Now the question is, why is being these uh, corporations being merged, right? सबसे पहली बात, there has been uneven distribution of resources, right? The trifurcation was done in the year two thousand and twelve, and it was done in order to enable better management of the city but it could not be done the safai karmacharis were not receiving their salaries on time the retirement benefits were not being given to uh, the employees the regular employees all right and of course each of these municipal corporation faced a severe shortage of resources right severe resource crunch to each of these corporation and we all know the mismanagement of covid-19 crisis during the second wave this was also somewhere responsible for uh, on account of mismanagement by these uh, municipal corporations all right so these are some underlying issues why is this step being taken up all right so basically after the passing of this act uh, north delhi municipal corporation south delhi and east delhi will be merged under municipal corporation of delhi all right but iske alawa apart from these three we have two more municipal corporations right one is your delhi cant board isme delhi cant board merge nahi hoga and new delhi municipal corporation bhi isme merge nahi hoga right new delhi municipal corporation comes under the control of central government directly right and uh, basically iska area kya hai ye new delhi municipal corporation act 1994 ke under aata hai right and it is controlled by a special officer that is appointed by the central government और राइट right. इसी तरह अगर हम लोग दिल्ली कैंट बोर्ड की बात करते हैं सो इट वर्क्स एज अ लोकल म्यूनिसिपल बॉडी बट इट कम्स अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ डिफेंस दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नोट इट डाउन और राइट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द डॉक्टर पॉपुलेशन रेशियो इन इंडिया एट प्रेजेंट राइट डॉक्टर पॉपुलेशन रेशियो क्या है वन इज टू एट थ्री फोर वन इज टू एट थर्टी फोर इज द डॉक्टर पॉपुलेशन रेशियो इन इंडिया right union minister of health and family welfare mr mansukh mandaviya ha has informed raj sabha that this is the current doctor population ratio jisme 80% of the registered doctors are allopathic doctors that are available to the population all right and that is it basically iska matlab kya hai that out of all 834 people in any given district in any given region or locality there is one doctor okay and of this 5 lakh 65000 are ayurvedic unani siddha and homeopathic doctors theek okay, hai so this is basic issue right 
उसमें से आप 2.89 लाख रजिस्टर्ड डेंटिस्ट है 1.3 मिलियन आर एलाइड हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल्स राइट एंड 3.3 मिलियन आर रजिस्टर्ड नर्सेस और राइट सो बेसिक इशू अंडरलाइन इशू क्या है टू इम्प्रूव द डॉक्टर पॉपुलेशन रेशियो राइट डब्ल्यू एच ओ क्या रिकमेंड करता है वॉट इज द रिकमेंडेड डॉक्टर पॉपुलेशन रेशियो बाय द डब्ल्यू एच ओ डू फाइंड इट आउट एंड लेट मी नो इन द कमेंट्स बिलो और राइट इट इज अ बेसिक नॉलेज और राइट सो बेसिक स्टेप्स क्या है बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया टू इम्प्रूव द डॉक्टर पॉपुलेशन रेशियो इन द कंट्री नंबर वन नंबर ऑफ मेडिकल कॉलेजेस राइट मेडिकल कॉलेजेस को इम्प्रूव करना that provide both post graduate and undergraduate courses right of the 22 new aiims that have been introduced in the country 19 of them have undergraduate courses all right opening up of medical colleges have been eased out right they have been eased out in terms of faculty in terms of infrastructure and in terms of staff right the age of hiring a faculty in these medical colleges the age bar has also been improved and the retirement age of you know deans of medical colleges have also been extended to 70 years all right and then also the existing medical colleges have specialty blocks right specialty blocks khole gaye hain uh, uh, through a central sector scheme in at least 70 specialty blocks have been opened up in uh, government medical colleges right these train uh, doctors into special uh, specialty areas right for example cardiologist pulmonologist all these things all right so these are some key initiatives taken up by the central government to improve the number of doctors per population right per 1000 people right and the amount allocated to healthcare in the country by the union budget in the union budget 22 23 has been 83000 crores All right, moving on to the next question. How much is the total ethanol production capacity at present? All right, so ethanol क्या होता है? Basically जो हमारे biofuels होते हैं, जो agriculture produce होता है, it is burnt, it is it undergoes pyrolysis and it produces energy. Very simple layman language. This is what ethanol. We will discuss more about it, learn more about it. But first, answer the question correctly. right total ethanol production capacity in the country as of now is rupees 8 uh, not rupees but 835 crore liters all right so gov the government has extended the timeline for disbursement of loan for ethanol projects announced under this different schemes all right so let's have a look at what all schemes do we have basically hamari country mein ethanol blending program hi hai jisme molasses based distilleries uh, have been um, established right the capacity has increased to 835 crore liters as of now this is the current uh, capacity uh, in india right it started off with a meager amount of 250 crore liters 215 crore liters right these are basically grain based distilleries jisme grains use hote hain jo agriculture ka feed stock reh jata hai right for example you have rice you take away the grain and whatever the feed stock is left it is sent to by these bio distilleries uh, where there are burned and ethanol is produced very simple process right so this uh, has this is the total ethanol capac production capacity in india for now right e10 there is there are two key terms known as e10 and e20 right e10 deals with what e10 is 10% blended blending of ethanol and petroleum and e20 is 20% blending of ethanol and petroleum All right so by April 2022 the government targeted to blend at least 10% of the ethanol right of which 9.66% ethanol blend blending was achieved in the year 2021 22 and the target was 10% so this is okay right so for for and the target for 2025 2030 is 20% ethanol blending right so why is ethanol important why is ethanol important for our country because it will reduce import dependence on oil crude oil basically so estimated savings kya hai hamari country ke paas at least 4000 4000 billion us dollars right equivalent to rupees 30 crores 30 crores of 
import bills will be saved if we achieve e20 level of ethanol blending by 2035 और राइट दूसरी चीज क्या हो जाएगी फार्मर रेम्यूनिटेशन शुगर किन फार्मर्स स्पेशली शुगर किन फार्मर्स विल बेनिफिट अ लॉट फ्रॉम द स्कीम राइट इफ दे आर नॉट एबल टू सेल द प्रोड्यूस कंप्लीटली और देर इज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ फेलियर राइट देर आर हार्वेस्ट लॉसेस बीइंग फेस्ड बाय दीज शुगर किन फार्मर्स दे कैन ईजिली सेल द एक्स्ट्रा शुगर केन टू दीज एथेनॉल ब्लेंडिंग रिफाइनरीज all right and there will be an extra source of remuneration all right secondly uh, ethanol production is also encouraged encouraged in crops like maize right maize jaise crops mein ethanol uh, encourage karne ka aim kya hai to reduce the water guzzling reduce the use of water guzzling crops like sugar cane right maize is primarily a water saving crop right and if ethanol blending uh, generates a good amount of revenue for the farmers more and more number of people will start growing maize and that will obviously lead to a sustainable agriculture right but then also to balance the uh, you know drawbacks of you know suppose all the farmers start growing maize then there will be a prominent threat to food security in our country right so balanced is out non food sources of ethanol non food stock sources of ethanol are also being discovered that are based primarily based on algae all right but let's not dive too deep into that these are some pros these are some benefits of you know ethanol blending uh, in 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 india right they can absorb moisture from atmosphere right earlier there was an issue that it can damage the engines but it has been confirmed that it is not so and there is a green flag towards ethanol blending in india all right moving on to the next question which state has signed an mou with samsung data system india and abhitech it solution for setting up world class sports digital experience center all right so sports digital experience center kaun si state ne sign kiya hai with samsung data systems india The answer is very easy. If you know कि हमारे country की first national sports university कहाँ पर set up किया गया है The first national sports university of our country set up by the Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs. It is being set up in Imphal, right? It is being set up in Imphal, Manipur. Okay, and this MOU is also being signed by Manipur. right sports digital experience center it is an abhitech it solutions right it is a part of manipur olympian sports park at khumman lampak sports complex all right so many famous olympians from manipur three of them very very famous right sabse pehle mary com right Mary Com is a very important uh, sports player prominent boxing champion from Manipur you also have Sai Com Mirabai Chanu who is who who won a silver medal in weightlifting right and Sangla Pakam Sharma who won bronze medal in 2020 Tokyo Olympic as hockey player all right so three prominent three most important olympians Mary Com right Mirabai Chanu right and hockey player sangla pakam sharma all right so manipur is a sports hub northeast in fact is a very has a very good and important potential for sports right and uh, national sports university is being set up by the central government costing rupees uh, at the infrastructure cost of rupees 400 crore all right national sports university being set up in imphal all right so this is what basically it all about right is ye sports education provide karega in sports medicine medicine sports technology right and it will also train people in various disciplines of sports right so it is very very important right so moving on to the next question which state has set up a first of its kind cooperative bank for dairy farmers first of its kind cooperative bank for dairy farmers kaun se state ne set up kiya hai please answer the question which is the correct answer 
कर्नाटका कर्नाटका चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ कर्नाटका बासवराज बम्बई इज द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ कर्नाटका एंड ही हैज सेट अप फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड को ऑपरेटिव बैंक फॉर डेयरी फार्मर्स इन द कंट्री और राइट सो नंदिनी शीरा समृद्धि को ऑपरेटिव बैंक इज बीइंग सेट अप जिसमें से 200 हंड्रेड करोर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट उसको प्रोवाइड नहीं सॉरी रुपीज हंड्रेड करोर ऑफ शेयर कैपिटल विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एंड रुपीज टू सिक्सटी करोर ऑफ शेयर कैपिटल विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द मिल्क को ऑपरेटिव राइट इट विल इट विल बी द फर्स्ट एवर को ऑपरेटिव बैंक फॉर डेयरी फार्मर्स इन कर्नाटका All right, so you all know, you all know the history of milk cooperatives, right? They account for a turnover of rupees as much as rupees twenty thousand crores in say a week. All right, so Amul, Parag, these are some very famous uh, examples of uh, dairy cooperatives, right? So in this light, Nandini Shira Samriddhi Cooperative Bank has been set up by the Karnataka government, right? And jitne bhi primary agriculture credit societies hain, right? These packs are basically the very basic unit of a cooperative credit society, right? They work at the level of gram sabha, right? And obviously the pro their main aim is to provide credit and microfinance and credit facilities to the farmers right so packs will also be computerized in just one year right so this is again a very important initiative for the benefit of dairy farmers in the country right so what is the threshold amount set up by the punjab national banks for availing positive pay system right positive pay system was introduced by the rbi it was mandated by the rbi in 2021 circular all right it was mandated by the rbi but again it is also up till 50000 amount it is the discretion of the account holder whether or not she or she wants to avail the positive pay system right but now the threshold amount is being set up by the punjab national bank the threshold amount is rupees 10 lakh however all the banks are recommended to set uh, set up a mandatory threshold amount right beyond which account holder does not have the discretion to uh, whether or not to avail the pps facility it is compulsory for the account holder to avail the pps uh, facility facility uh, for amount exceeding rupees 5 lakh but punjab national bank has set up a higher threshold limit of rupees 10 lakh all right the the system will be effective from april 4 to prevent large value check frauds right so basically positive pay system kya hai it is a system for of cross checking the details right the details of the account holder are cross checked right they are electronically cross checked uh, right whether the name is correct right name date right all these are very important factors that are uh, relevant right agar kuch bhi zara sa bhi error ho jata hai check mein to check bounce ho jata and causes a lot of trouble right legal and financial trouble right name date even the amount every single detail is cross checked right these details are submitted through sms through internet banking right or through atm automatic teller machines all these details are uh, has to have to be submitted uh, through any of these three uh, mediums all right and then there are cross checked and verified and then the check truncation system through the check truncation system the check is transferred all right so the scheme was uh, the system was developed by npci right we have already discussed this Okay, so I hope the concept of positive pay system was very very clear to you. All right, now you have to find out two things and write it down in the comments below. The chairman of NPCI, right, and the CEO of Punjab National Bank, right. See, basically, why do I ask you to write, search it down, and write it down in the comments below? instead of me telling you if you will do this exercise on your own you will remember you will remember always 
right there will be no scope of forgetting these facts if you do these uh, minor uh, you know searches on your own you will you will get encouraged to learn more to search more right that is the objective behind it all right so this uh, ppa system was uh, introduced for rupees 50000 checks valuing rupees more than 50000 but up till rupees 5 lakh tentatively up till rupees 5 lakh it is on the discretion of the account holder right banks may make the mandatory threshold limit up to rupees 5 lakh pnb ne 10 lakh kar diya so it can also be 10 lakh there is no uh, uh, final decision over it this is what exactly we have written over here right it is at the discretion of the account holder banks may consider making it mandatory for check of rupees 5 lakh and above pnb however has made it mandatory for rupees 10 lakh and above right beyond 10 lakh the account holder does not have the option he he or she has to avail the pps right he or, he or she has to submit the details through the pps all right so sebi's new committee formed for reviewing governance norm in infrastructure institutions right g mahalingam committee former member of sebi investors uh, he heads the advisory committee on investors production protection and education fund right it was set up in the year 2013 by the sebi right securities exchange board of india headquartered in mumbai the ceo of sebi is mr ajay tyagi all right so i got confused in the names it happens All right. So basically, G Mahalingam committee is being formed to review the governance norm for market infrastructure institutions. All right. So IPEF basically was set up in two thousand and thirteen to check what norms and available procedures are there, you know, for investor education, investor protection. All right. And it will its main aim will be to monitor framework for key managerial persons. All right. so this was a small news you should know about it moving on, moving on to the next question we have who has been appointed as the vice chair of the standing committee on administration and management as at the international telecom union council right itu is basically a specialized agency of the un right it manages the telegraph systems of the world all right and a particular person miss aprajita sharma Miss Aprajita Sharma, who is uh, actually an Indian Post and Telecom Accounts and Finance Officer, she has been appointed as the Vice Chair of the Standing Committee on Administration and Management at the ITU Council Session 2023-25. All right. So I hope the session was useful to you. All right, you got to learn a lot. Right. I try to give my best. I hope you take the best as well. Thank you so much for watching. Keep preparing, study well. All the very best for your exam. Take care and bye bye.